Give me a show of hands. How many of you are trying to teach yourself English? I can see you. I can see all of you. Whoa, that's a lot of you. Let's give all of you a round of applause. Hi, I'm Dora, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Bite Size English. In today's episode, I'm going to give you some advice on how to teach yourself vocabulary. As an ESL teacher, these are things which I teach my students whenever they need to learn new words. And now I'm passing that information on to you, the ones who don't have access to a classroom or a teacher right now, so you can succeed in your language goals. Are you ready? Here we go. Throughout all our episodes of Bite Size English, we've been giving you those tips on how to learn and remember vocabulary. See it, read about it, try to use it, write it, then listen for it and try to say it. Do it multiple times to put that new word from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. But when studying vocabulary, there are actually nine different ways of looking at it. To show you what I mean, let's look at one word through those nine different lenses. The word is cheap. First, how did I pronounce it? Cheap. Pronunciation is all about muscles around your mouth. To make the ch sound, your tongue is high in your mouth, your teeth are closed, and you push a pop of air through your teeth. Ch. Look at your face in the mirror and imitate my face. Cheap. Your mouth should stretch wide with lips tense on that long E sound. Second, when listening to that word, could you guess the spelling? The long E sound can be written in so many ways. For me, I need to write it out letter by letter and see it to remember it. For some of my students, they need me to say every letter, they hear it and then remember it. How do you remember spelling? Third, so what is the primary meaning or denotation of cheap? Well, what was the sentence where you saw or heard the word? Was it this? It was a really cheap meal. The primary meaning here is, it was a really inexpensive meal. Fourth, what is the word's grammar? What is its part of speech in that sentence? An adjective? A verb? You're right. In that sentence, it's an adjective. Cheap or inexpensive? Is there a difference? Would you say that cheap is more formal or informal than inexpensive? In my opinion, the word cheap would be used in more informal conversations than the word inexpensive. And knowing the difference is knowing the words register, our fifth way of looking at the word. Point number six. Have a look at these verbs. Go, be, look. Which collocates with or pairs naturally with cheap? All of them. But be careful. One of those verbs is used when you want to judge something's quality. Which one? It's C. Which leads us to point number seven. What if the sentence said, it looked really cheap? You've changed the meaning of that adjective to be about how something was made. When a word has more than one meaning, that is polysemy. Not only that, but the connotation can change. Our eighth point. What is connotation? It's the cultural meaning of words or expressions, which is more than just the dictionary meaning. Because saying something is cheap can be interpreted as being of poor quality. Don't say we sell cheap mm -hmm. things. It's better to say we sell affordable things and never say a person is cheap as that has a really negative connotation unless you want to be mean. You can say that the person is thrifty and they choose to spend their money wisely. And finally, our last way of looking at vocabulary, number nine, can you transform the word like at a suffix? Yep, you can. There is no English class cheaper then our BSE videos. We're the cheapest in price, but not in quality. Test time. So here's your memory test. Can we remember any of those nine ways of looking at vocabulary? Pronunciation, spelling, denotation, word grammar, register, collocation, polysemy, connotation, and word transformation. 
So what's the tip for today? When looking up a new word, don't just find the first meaning and toss the dictionary away. Quickly run through your head what are the other things I need to understand about this word. Use other dictionaries to find out. Am I certain about the context? How do I say it, write it, use it, transform it? What other words pair with it so I sound natural? That's all for today. Make sure you comment below with questions you have. Subscribe to the channel, share this episode, and see you next time on Bite Size English.